Hello and welcome to today's history lesson. Today we are going to be talking about John Sobieski, who was born on August 17, 1629. John was born in Olesko, which is what we now call the Ukraine. John graduated from the Nowodworski College in 1643 when he was 14 years old. When young John had finished his studies, he and his younger brother, Marek, set out on a trip to Western Europe. They traveled for two years. While on their trip, they met several interesting people. One of them was Charles II of England and William II, Prince of Orange. They learned French, Bonjour, German, Hello, Italian, Ciao, and on top of all of that, Latin, Salve. In 1648, the brothers returned to their homeland after receiving the news that their king had died and the warfare of the Kem El Nitsky uprising. They volunteered for the army and they both fought in the siege of Zamas. The two brothers founded and commanded cavalries of their own, which consisted of six to ten men. Because of the war, the brothers were separated. In the year of 1652, Marek, John's younger brother, died after his capture at the Battle of Bati. After his brother's tragic death, John was promoted to the rank of a colonel. He fought very well and was a promising commander. On May 26, 1656, just four years after his brother's death, John received the position of Standard Bearer of the Crown. During the Battle of Warsaw, John was in charge of 2,000 men. In 1665, John married Marie. Sobieski was elected deputy twice, and he fought in several more battles. One of those battles would be the Battle of Vienna. He defeated the Ottoman Turks, which many people believed was his greatest accomplishment of all. He had a total of nine children, five sons and four daughters. Although King Sobieski spent most of his time on the battlefield, he grew very ill, and on June 17, 1696, King John Sobieski III died at the age of 66 in Vilanov, Poland. His wife died in 1760 and was buried next to her husband in Wawel Cathedral. In Poland, Sobieski is remembered as the hero king. One inspiring thing that Sobieski did was love his dear wife unconditionally. He loved his wife more than the throne. When he was being forced to divorce her and marry the former queen in order to gain the throne, he refused and remained loyal to his wife. Well, that wraps up our presentation on Sobieski and the defeat of the Ottoman Turks. We hope you enjoyed this skit. See you next time.